A message from the Association of Home of... CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... is a fickle gypsy, always blind and often tipsy. Sometimes, for years and years together, she'll bless you with the sunniest weather, bestowing on her pudding, pence, you come to match, why or when. Then, in a moment, presto pass, your joys are withered like the grass. Or as we say today, you win some, you lose some. The important thing to remember is not always who wins the big one, but who wins the last one. Somebody offered me a job, and it's called Pro Consul. I'm going to rule over the whole world. Lou, are you okay? But I won't take it, Lou. No? Why not? Because I'd have to become a traitor. A traitor? to the whole human race. Then don't take it. But, Lil, if I don't take it, they'll kill me. Our mystery drama, Fly Squatter, was written especially for the mystery theater by Sam Dan and stars Fred Gwynn and Edie Juster. I'll be back shortly with Act One. of the underworld, Lou Valentine is a cannon or a dip. Both of them are used to describe a pickpocket. Of course, we can hold no brief for this kind of activity, nor do we justify it in any way. But it is one of the world's oldest professions, and to perform it with proficiency requires years of painstaking practice. Lou works with his wife, Lil. Here they are, in action. Lil is about 40, dark hair, dark eyes, and full figured. She holds a piece of paper in her hand. There is a confused, but also a rather charming look on her face as she approaches a well-dressed, dignified, mature-looking gentleman. In a most seductive French accent, she says, Oh, but, uh, monsieur, I do not speak English very good. Only that, uh, who do you read this address? Even a heart of stone could hardly resist this charmer. He looks at her. He looks at the paper. He is blinded by that dazzling smile. And he wants this moment to last as long as possible. Oh, you lost, my dear lady. Let me see if I may... Oh, I... Is, is that number 23 or 33? Well, now, let me take it down. That would be, uh... That would be near, uh... He is so enchanted, he doesn't notice the small, slender man who has come up behind him. And he doesn't realize that his wallet is just been deftly removed from his pocket. But she does. And now it is time to disengage. Ah, I must thank you. Au revoir. And she is gone. What a smooth operation. But life, by its very nature, cannot run smoothly all the time. Lou Valentine is plagued by special problems. Two of them are about to surface this morning. Problem number one is now approaching. Hello, Lou. Uh, do I know you? My name is Frankie. Frankie what? Frankie, it don't make no difference. Uh, so? What do, you, what do you want? I want to be your friend. What? Had your breakfast? Hey, let's hop into this lunchroom and take on a stack of wheat. I'm by. Huh. Well, then, after you. You like some more coffee? I'd like some more conversation. Lou, you are the best dip in the business. 
And we respect that. Thank you. Otherwise, you'd have had your fingers busted. Huh? You were spotted working fifth and Jefferson. You and a wife. Great team. Pleasure to watch. She's so look good. That babe, she kind of <laughs> sidles up to the mark. Bats them baby browns at him. We'll miss your resist for me. <laughs> While he's trying to figure out, can he promote some action there? You're in and you're out of his pocket. Hey, we uh, pick on a friend of yours. No, Lou, it ain't that. Then what's the beef? You can't work Fifth and Jefferson no more. Why not? Because we rented it to somebody else. We? The association. Oh, oh the association. What happens now? You gotta join up, like everybody else. I've always been a freelancer. I know. Them days is gone forever. Things gotta be organized, run in an orderly way. Otherwise, people are always knocking heads. So, if you wanna work, you pay your initiation. We rent your corner, you're in action. What if I don't join? Lou, you've been around too long to ask that kind of question. Frankie, you want to know something? I may have been around too long, period. Thinking of retiring, Lou? Don't do it. I'll have to discuss it with the wife. Sure, Lou, you do that. Listen, you know what we'll put aside for you? The whole brand new Midtown Shopping Mall. It's all yours. <laughs> Hello, Lou. Hey, Sergeant Hawk. Lieutenant Hawk. Huh. Finally made it, huh? I'd have made it long ago if I'd have been able to collar you a little. Uh, no hard feelings, I hope. No. And to prove it, I'll give you a little tip. Leave town. Uh, I like it here. You won't like it much longer. The worst come down, get all the known dips off the street. Well, thanks, Lieutenant. You're being watched, Lou. Sure. You figure you're too good to be picked up, but sooner or later. Uh, much obliged. And another thing that'll ruin it for you. The association. Mm, what's the association? You joined up yet? I never heard of it. You've always been a loner, but the way it works now, without those fellas, you can't work. And they'd sell you down the river in a minute. Uh huh? Why are you telling me all this, Lieutenant? You've always been a gentleman, Lou. Don't you think it's time you retired? Hey, on what? You must have put away a nice little nest egg. <laughs> yeah, but we've been eating it for breakfast. Uh, you ever hear of inflation? You know what they say, Lou. Life begins at 40. Huh? For who? Did you know? Yes. Well, how'd we do today? We didn't even crack the nut. You know, the guy with the monocle, the derby hat, and the black coat with the velvet collar. He had to have dough. You know what was in that wallet? Credit cards. Every credit card in the world. Mm. I, I, don't, I don't know what to say. Today you got a situation where both the rich and the poor walk around without any ready cash. The poor, because they don't have it. The rich, because they don't need it. It's all credit cards. Yeah. What's the matter with everybody? Don't they realize they're getting themselves in the debt? What happened to all the old-fashioned values we were taught as kids? Thrift. You want something? You save your money. You pay cash, which means you have to carry cash. One place where people still carry cash is at the racetrack. <laughs> and that's where we'll find every cop in town. Half of them know us. And if that's not enough, the association's probably got the tracks organized, too. Maybe we should join the association. Never. Then we'll just have to think of another line of work. Like what? I'm not a safe cracker. And I'm not going to start carrying a gun at my age. Lil, we're pickpockets. That's all we know how to do. It's the best grift there is. You make a direct connection with the client. And you're out of there. I know, Lou. Oh, but after 25 years, we're being squeezed out. Face it. Between this new, what do they call it? Cashless society. And the cops. And association. How do we make a living? 
Maybe we just have to find jobs. <laughs> Doing what? Doing what civilians do. How do they find jobs? Well, they answer the war bags. They go to agencies. The fellow behind the desk says, yeah, let me see your resume. Let me see a listing of your skills. We got skills? They want what they call marketable skills. Here, in the paper. Let's look at the ads. Help wanted computer programmer, financial analyst, marketing specialist. Now, where do we fit in? Well, it's got to be something else. Here, here. It says help wanted domestic. Huh? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, listen. Couple wanted suburban estate, secluded area. Man to be chauffeur and butler, woman to be housekeeper, good salary. Are you serious? What do we know about it? We qualify 100%. Well, to begin with, we're a couple. I can keep house, that makes me a housekeeper. You can drive a car, that makes you a chauffeur. Yeah, You can open and close doors, and that makes you a butler. But I don't have an English accent. Well, pull it on. I'll show you how. There are one references. Right now, we'll go and see Benny the writer. He's the best forger in town. He'll design a piece of stationery with the coat of arms of our last employers. The, um, the Duke and Duchess of Somerset, Hertfordshire. In honor, he'll write a knockout letter of recommendation. It's crazy. <laughs> so are the times. They've never been crazier. So, the best thing to do is just lay low and wait it out. Well, maybe this scam might that is a few bucks. A most impressive recommendation. Wouldn't you say so, my dear? Quite. Of course, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, uh, this is not nearly as large a household as the Duke of Somerset Hertfordshire. So, uh, 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 could you be happy here in our simple abode? Uh, 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 quite happy, sir. And you, Mrs. Jones? Oh, sir, you must call me Henriette. Uh, uh, yes, my lord. And uh, me, Oswald. Mrs. Moscow and I enjoy our privacy. You shall be the only sleeping help. You will hire local people to assist you by the day. Yes, sir. Well, my dear, hmm, I believe I'm rather impressed with Mr. and Mrs. Jones. <laughs> Oswald and Henriette. And you? The Duke of Somerset Hertfordshire gives them a most glowing recommendation. Then I take it we are in agreement. All that remains is to discuss the salary. Say, a thousand a month? A, 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 a thousand. Why waste time in negotiation? This isn't some uh, labor management dunny book. Make it two thousand. Two, 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 two thousand. Oh, we, we, Mr. Muska, we, we. Uh, Yes, sir, Mr. Muska. I can't believe it. Two grand a month. Uh, what if they check the references? They won't. How do you know? Mr. and Mrs. Muska. Oh, I got them pegged. They just got rich. How can you tell? Oh, look at the stuff in the house. Cost a lot of dough, but it's all brand new. Uh, why Why do you say they won't check the references? Well, they want us to teach them. What? How to behave like rich people, so nobody will think they're a couple of johnny come lately. Mm. And you see how they looked at that $5 a sheet linen stationery, <laughs> that golden boss coat of arms? And they want to believe it. They want to have the couple that work for the Duke and Duchess of Hertfordshire, Somerset. <laughs> uh, uh, you mean Somerset, Hertfordshire. Well, Mrs. Muska, what do you think of our acquisition? Oswald and Annette? Oh, they're so transparently fraudulent. Of course. <laughs> Which is why I hired them. Could we have done better? I doubt it. I was checking the scale all the while they were speaking, and I find them perfect in every primary requirement. And when are we ready? Mrs. Muska, the thing can't be done overnight. I'd rather you didn't call me Mrs. Muska when no one's about. 
Tell me who are the Duke and Duchess of Somerset, Hertfordshire? I have already submitted them for verification. There are no such people. There is no such place. Oh, when can we get rid of these two? We didn't hire them to get rid of them. Remember? Uh, yes, I remember. Good. See that you don't forget, Mrs. Moscow. I won't. And don't call me Mrs. Moscow. No. But should he call her? She said it was a peculiar name, Mosca. But where does this take us? We only know for sure it will take us right into Act Two shortly. out-of-work pickpockets who have decided to go straight. And so, they have found employment on a suburban estate as a housekeeping couple. But is their honest resolve about to be thwarted? Have they fallen among thieves, bigger and smarter thieves than themselves? You must know by now that we are weaving a tangled web. And what is our next move? We must wait for Oswald and Henriette to respond to the indoctrinator. And how long will that take? Who can say? We turn it on and hope for the best. Individual very. Oswald and Henriette. <laughs> Indeed. The names are Lou and Lil Valentine. Oh, who cares about that? You're not even curious? I just want to get this thing over with and move on. The process proceeds at its own pace. Who would that be? Your new butler. Oh, what does he want? I am sure it has to do with food, lunch, dinner, so on and so forth. You mean we have to eat what they eat? I'm afraid so. Come in, please. Yes, Oswald? Madame Henriette would like to know what you would like for dinner, sir. Oh, uh, whatever is convenient. Oh, yes, sir. Is there anything else, Oswald? Uh, no, sir. Tell me, Oswald, do you feel anything? Uh, anything like what, madam? A light buzzing in your head, perhaps? Uh, no, madam. Oswald, that will be all. Yes, sir. Why did you have to ask him that? Because I told you, I want to get this over with. What if he does feel a buzzing? Will it make any difference in the long run? Some kitchen, huh? Real class. Yeah. Something more? Mm, everything's brand new. All the appliances, nothing's been used. Oh, naturally. There's never been any food in the refrigerator. Nothing's ever been cooked on the stove. How can you tell? You can tell. Take my word for it. So what? And there's absolutely nothing to eat in the house. Well, are we supposed to go out and do the shopping? Well, meanwhile, there isn't so much as a crumb. You'd think there'd be some coffee and sugar and bread. Something, anything. What do these people eat? Maybe they go out. You can't go out for everything. I mean... Every time you want a cup of tea, let's say. Some people are just don't go in for food. Oh, everybody's got to eat. Oh, look. What? Flies. Hey, they can't be flies. It's the middle of January. How do they get here? Oh, look, look in the drawer there. See if you can find a fly. Nothing. Well, remember to pick one up when we go to the store. How do you get flies this time of the winter? Oh, what's the difference? Let's get rid of them. Hey, let me roll up this newspaper. So many flies. Ah, got them. Oh! Hey, what? 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 Be 
hitting my stride. I banged three of them that time. What is the meaning of this? Uh, uh, huh? What do you think you're doing? I'm, I'm, I'm killing flies, sir. Murder, murder. What? Stop. At once. Uh, Immediately. Explain yourself. Uh, 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 what's uh, to explain, uh, sir? What is this barbarous killing? Uh, uh, sir, sir, they're only flies. Murderers! Assassin? Oh, but, Monsieur Mosca, one must need flies. Madam, are you insane? The flies, they spread the disease. That is a despicable slander. I will not have more of it in my household. Oh, but, Monsieur... Is that understood? Oh, oui, Monsieur. Oswald? Uh, yes, sir. How about your duties? <laughs> The news is not good. How many? I, uh, I counted seven. Oh, oh no. Who? Oh. The best and the bravest. Oh. Millicent, oh. Edward, Robert, Gertrude, Virginia, Albert, oh. and Maxine. Oh, I think I am going to pass out. You must not. Oh, I am exhausted. Yes, I can understand. Do you know what a strain it is to maintain this, this appearance? Of... I know, I know. I'm doing the same thing. When can we admit? When it is safe. Oh, but when will that be? I'll let you know. The shopping center that way. I know. So, why are you headed to a city? Well, we're working for a pair of nuts. This business with the flies. Hmm. Why would he put on an act like that? You know, that scares me. I don't think it was an act. That scares me even more. I think it was on a level. Why would a guy just go to pieces because we were killing flies? Uh, came in, looked at us, spoke to us. Spoke to us as if we were killing human beings. Yeah. What does that mean? Hmm. Beats me. But I'll tell you who might know. Who? Benny the writer. Benny? He knows everything. He could be a Jain. What's that? J-A-I-N. A religion. Never heard of it. In India. The guy looks like an American. He travels. Well, uh, what's it all about? Nobody knows for sure. It's got to be about something. It is. And it isn't. I can't believe the two of you. What am I listening to? Now, Benny, why would a guy have a fit just because we were killing some flies? Because they believe a fly has a soul. A fly? Every living thing has an immortal soul. Oh, yeah. They, they won't even walk outdoors. Why not? They're afraid they'll step on an ant. You sure about all this, Benny? You could look it up. Yeah. Thanks, Benny. Any time. <laughs> These flies are driving me nuts. Mm, me too. Hey, what's that? What does it look like? A fly swatter. Oh, and there's a couple. No, no, Lou, don't. Why not? You'll have him come running in here. Lou, I bought this thing because I mean business. You can't have flies all over the place. Well, sure, but you'll have to do it while they're out of the house. And when is that? They never go anyplace. They got a brand new car. They hire a chauffeur. And all they do is stay home in their room. Lil, what's going on here? You're asking me? Yeah. Uh, what did you make for dinner? Oh, I made us a couple of hamburgers. And for them? Nothing. They're not going to eat dinner either? Well, he told me they'd skip it tonight. In two days, they haven't had a single bite to eat. I know. What are they living on? I heard what Benny said. Maybe they think all animals and plants have immortal souls. Maybe they believe you're not supposed to eat any of them. Listen, I think it has to be a scam. They probably have a supply of chow stashed away in a bedroom, and they're putting on this act for you and me. Why? What can they get out of us? Oh, come on, well, maybe we shouldn't even wait to find out. Let's leave right now. 
Where else are we going to pick up two grand a month? Maybe we should quit before we get in too deep. Before we get too deep into what? Uh, why don't we just sleep on it? Maybe things will look better in the morning. You will be able to relax. I have to get rid of this weight, even for just a little while. Just a bit longer. I've just received permission to turn on the indoctrinator. Hurry. And all our troubles will soon be over. Well, let me know when I can go to sleep. Oh, you've got the thing started finally. It won't be much longer now. Education's always to be commended. But then we have Mr. Elliot who tells us that all our knowledge brings us nearer to our ignorance. And our ignorance brings us nearer to our death. One thing we can say for certain is that we are being brought close to free. these same people who do not stir from their home advertise for a chauffeur? Why should anyone, in his or own right mind, protest the killing of the most common and dangerous of all household pests, the ordinary, everyday fly? Why indeed? You shut off the indoctrinator. Why did you shut it off? Getting resistance. Well, then let's rid ourselves of these two and find a couple of others. No. They have the exact profile. But it's taking too long. In the end, it will be worth the wait. Oh, why is this one so difficult? It happens sometimes. Let me use the indoctrinator. You? Why not? I'm qualified. But I'm the one who is... And uh, you're the one who's not getting results. Well, well uh, sooner or later, I... Suppose I'm, uh, we fall asleep before we've sealed them. We won't. Look at you. You can hardly keep your eyes open now. Oh, all right. But if you use too much power... I am going to use exactly enough for the complete process. Easy. Let me do this when you see. Should 
I go in and ask them if they want lunch? You know they don't want lunch. Oh, yeah. What's their racket? I sure would want a house like this. And how much money? All the money and the... How much do you want, Lou? I don't know. A million, maybe. We need more. With inflation. But we have to do something for the money. What? We have to be pro-consul. But I don't know what a pro-consul does. He makes up the list of who's going to die. But everybody has to die. What do you mean by everybody? All the people. But not us. Us too. But later. What's later? After everybody else is gone. What do we have to do? Tell me again. Preside over the orderly replacement of the human race. What are we talking about? Lou, where are these thoughts coming from? Lou, help me. My mind. I'm going crazy. Me too. Why are we thinking these things? Let's get out of here. I I can't move. I'm going to think, Lou. Hold on. Uh, Hold on. mm -hmm. Try to hold on. I'm senior officer. Shut it off. You could kill them. It's the task we take. We must restore them gently. We have to get their answer right now. Oh, now listen here. No, you listen. It's a race against time. We have to get security so we can relax and go to sleep. Yes, I understand. All right. I'll use it now. I'll have to be very gentle. And not alarm them. I don't care what you do. Just, just do it. What pretty music. Where's it coming from? Maybe Mr. and Mrs. Mosca have a record player. They're such nice people. So kind, so considerate. Don't you just love them? Yes, love they're real people. No, they're not. They're not? Why then? Why? Why? Mr. and Mrs. Mosca are flies. Yes, Lou. But they're human beings, like you and me. No, no, they can't be. You saw them. If they were human, they'd have to eat. They're flies? From where? A star in... Alpha Centauri. Where the prevalent life form is the fly. The fly. How did they get here? They are going to assist the terrestrial flies. To take to... over the earth? We have to stop them. We have to stop them. No, no, no. We can't. They're smarter. The fly is smarter than we are? <laughs> you just give me my swatter. These flies are smarter. It's a a hustle, a swindle, a racket. No, no, Lou. It's on the level. What do they want from you and me? Don't you hear what they're saying? Pro-consul. Pro-consul of the conquered province. I won't do it. Have we got a choice? That's being a traitor. It doesn't matter. We can't fight it. ideas that were running through our heads. Where'd they come from? Did we imagine all this? Let's ask them. Who? You know who? Danny, the writer. Well, what do you think? I think they're going to come over to us. He sounded pretty strong to me. He said, A, I won't do it. B, that being a traitor. To which she replied, A, it doesn't matter, and B, we can't fight. 
They're leaving the house. Where are they going? I sense they just want to talk about it, think about it. This strains the absolute capacities of their limited intelligence. So they will try in vain to fight off what they know is the inevitable. But they are ours now. They belong to us. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. That is why I am squadron commander. Oh, but I... I was chosen because I was born with this extra sense that enables me to feel when my victims have passed a turning point. Now, all my training, my experience, and my instinct tell me that they have crossed their Rubicon and cast the die. Relax. Relax? Huh? Finally? Relax. Now, by the numbers. Uh, One. Lower energy level. Repeat. Lower energy level. I can breathe. I can breathe. Breathe. Two. Prepare to discard humanoid shield. Repeat. Prepare to discard humanoid shield. Three. Discard humanoid shield. Discard. Four. Reduce to normal size and shape. <sighs> Reduce to blessed normal size. And shit. Now we can enjoy some sleep. Go ahead. Why, uh, I, I believe she already has. Oh, my dear. I'll be with you in a moment. Oh, I shall be with you in a brief moment. What do you think, Benny? It's open and shut. The two of them are flies. Flies? Yeah, Lil. Flies. To begin with, the name gives it away. Name? You know what Mosca means? A fly. A kitten. In Latin. But they're human beings like you and me. They look like human beings. How can they look they like They project you? the image. What does that mean? You go to the movies, right? The people on the screen, they look real, huh? Yeah? But they're just shadows. Right? <laughs> These are not shadows. They are real. They only look real. Ah, I don't believe it. Why not? Because I know what's real and what's fake. The real and the fake, sometimes they can be the same thing. <sighs> Here we go with that stuff again. Everything is relative. Who told you all this? Albert Einstein. You want me to believe that you, Benny the writer... You talk to Albert Einstein? It was very easy to talk to. All you had to do was ring the doorbell. He'd say, hello, how are you? Come in, have a cup of coffee. What's on your mind? Anybody could get to him. If you could talk to Mr. Einstein, Lou, I'm sure he'd tell you the exact same thing I'm doing. Your Mr. and Mrs. Mosca are actually flies that come from some planet in Alpha Centauri. What kind of conversation am I listening to? What kind of nuts are in this room with me? Albert Einstein, Alpha Centauri, flies that can disguise themselves like human beings. And they're going to take over the planet Earth. But, Benny, isn't there anything we can do about it? No. No? What do you mean, No. Nothing. There has to be some. What? Look, it was a pretty good world while it lasted. But nothing goes on forever, huh? Everything has to come to an end one day. Don't it? I suppose so. Thanks, Benny. Thanks a lot. Any time. Well, what do you want to do? About what? Well, this whole thing. Lou, I've been thinking. All in our heads. Yeah. Let me tell you what really happened. We were swapping flies in the kitchen, remember? Yeah. Well, he, uh, Mr. Mosca, he comes storming in. He's so upset he's out of his mind. He lights into us. He calls us murderers, assassins, right? So? So, he gets us rabbled, nervous. So we cook up this whole bit. In our imagination. Is that what you think? What else could it possibly be? Uh, 
I don't know. Oh, come on, Lou. Fly? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe you could be right. But this will be the third day we're here, and the third day they haven't eaten. Well, a lot of these highly religious people go in for periods of fasting, you know. So that takes care of it all, don't it? Maybe. Let's you and me go up and see him right now. Mr. Oswald and Madame Henriette. And we shall ask what Madame and Monsieur Mosca shall require of us this evening, yeah? Okay. What could they be? Wouldn't they have told us if they were? Funny. I hope they're all right. Is, is the door unlocked? Yeah. Well, let's see if everything's okay. Monsieur Mosca? Madame Mosca? They're not here. Hmm. What could they have gone? Maybe for a walk. Oh, yeah, I suppose so. Maybe they want to work up an appetite for dinner. Hey, look. Look. Two flies. Where? See him? On a windowsill. Oh. Now, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Mosca aren't around, so, uh, just wait. I'll be back in a second. Lou. My trusty fly swatter. No, wait a minute, Lou. For what? If we're going to work here, maybe we'll have to learn to live with flies. What are you talking about? Flies are dangerous. They spread all kinds of disease. Yeah, I, I know that, Lou. I know that, but... But what are you trying to tell me? Uh, well, maybe we have to learn to respect the beliefs of our employers. Are you serious? Well, it's their house. They have the right to establish the rules. If we don't like it, we're free to leave. Well, aren't we? Yeah. You're right, Lou. Uh, okay. I respect their beliefs. On the other hand, since they're not home, they'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Lou. <coughs> Stand back. Got them both. Get rid of the evidence quick. Okay. Ah, good. Now, let us relax and wait for Mr. and Mrs. Mosca to come back from their walk. When now turned from, Lou and Lil Valentine were still waiting. They live in this big, beautiful suburban mansion. They have an unlimited amount of funds to draw upon. They are secure from both the toils of the association and the coils of Lieutenant Hawk and Mr. and Mrs. Mosca. What happened to them? Well, we know, don't we? We should discuss this further, shortly. There are millions, billions, trillions, oh, the number is infinite of stars and planets and solar systems and galaxies and universes. How dare we assume that we are the only intelligent beings that exist in the vastness of space? And why couldn't the dominant life form on one of those distant planets way out there be the planet? And those flies could already be doing what we are only beginning to attempt. That is, to venture out into the unknown and conquer. Our cast included Fred Grimm, Evie Gusta, and Bernard Grant. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. I'll report the offer to Foley at the garage. He can alert the police. Uh, do you think that is wise? Uh, if you do not do what the foreign man advises, you might be hurt, Tom. But Mr. Clark and the police have got to be told about the crazy offer. If I do receive the money, we'll celebrate when I return. Two nights from now. Wish me luck. Just what the devil is going on, Alan? I wish I knew, Jack. Two trucks. 
Now, how in the name of sanity can two 18-wheelers disappear without a trace? Now, who hijacks them? Where do they take the trucks? How does it happen? Uh, Tom Tully will tell us. And where is he? He's been released by the police. He should be here any minute. Without a scratch on him, according to the police. Now, how do you explain that? Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by White Westinghouse Appliance Company. This is Tommy Grimes, inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time. Pleasant dreams. Hi, this is plenty of everything.